too bad. Let's try this. That work? Good? Yeah? yeah? Hi. I'm Conrad Lucas. I'm going to read uh, three short pieces for you real quick. This first one is called Between Spaces. It's not a question of who, but a question of where I am. I am the median between the street and the sidewalk. I am the threshold of every waiting room. I am the space between spaces. I am shadows looming and fumes pooling above puddles of spilt kerosene, neither seen nor heard, but felt in the vignette of a dated photograph in the border between fine penciled lines. I am mist after rain. I am scars and streaks where tears have stained the shells of crustacean people. I am crushing hangovers and embers glowing. Who am I? I am the spaces between spaces. Stairwells and parking lots, unmarked graves, condensation on a whispered word floating up into frigid twilight under an off-white half-moon. This next one is called Phineas Gage. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Phineas Gage, but he was a railroad man somewhere in Vermont. And one day, he accidentally blew a fucking iron rod through his fucking think box, and here's the kicker, he fucking lived. <laughs> now this big metal cylinder on its flight path carved a cavern in Gage's cerebrum, more specifically through his frontal lobe, and when the bleeding finally stopped and they got his left eye all sewn shut, he told the first person he saw, probably a loved one, crowded around his filthy hospital bed, to kindly fuck off and die. <laughs> <laughs> he got out of that hospital bed eventually, and when he did, he tried his damnedest to go back to work, but he just couldn't. What's more, his friends said he just wasn't Gage anymore his personality had changed. He didn't give a shit about the sunset anymore. He liked his coffee black and his pancakes dry, which is strange because beforehand he didn't drink any coffee and he didn't like pancakes much neither. He also became quite the drinker, which is funny considering he hadn't had a drop of alcohol in his life before then. You see, I always thought that personality was something you couldn't touch that it was some grand unifying evidence of the existence of the human soul. But here's Gage, who just takes a pole to the dome, and suddenly he's just not Gage. So maybe it's true that we're all just machines, and you can pull a man's favorite color, or his taste in music, or his eating habits out of his head, and set them on a sterile tray right in front of him. That makes sense. But everything in me still wants to believe. This is called human. <laughs> Growing up, they tell you all about how the world will surprise you as you grow older and how cruel life can be and how heartless people can be. What is more important is what they don't tell you about how you will surprise yourself with the things you do, incredible things, the things you make, but also in your ability to destroy. And that, though your intentions may be pure, you will cause pain to others that you Yes, you, you yourself, will have moments of heartlessness and selfishness and cruelty. And that is what it means to be human. Thank you.